Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today is Monday the 25th of July 2020. And uh, my name is Matthew Gill, Prophet and First Elder of the Restored Branch of Jesus Christ. I am at the moment in Scotland with my in-laws for a little holiday. I wish I could tell you the weather was great here. But no, it's uh, Scottish weather. But um, it's, great, it's great to be here and uh, we're really enjoying being with uh, Vicky's mum and dad. So it's good. So the reason for my video today. Well, as everybody's aware, this new Joseph Smith picture has just dropped. And everybody's talking about it. And everybody's chatting about it and got their point of view on it. And I wanted to... Uh, get online and express how I feel about it um, and what I think about it. Uh, so um, I have seen the photo and um, it's intriguing. Um, the photo we need, you know, probably people know this anyway, it was only, it was, it's only discovered in 2020 by Joseph Miss June is great, great, great grandson, and um, Daniel Larson, his name is, and he found it uh, in some possessions uh, that belonged to his mother, Joseph Smith the Third's uh, great granddaughter, or something like that. And it's a it's a tiny locket. The pictures in it, the pictures in a locket. So it's only a small picture. It's nothing huge. It's not like a painting. Um, and um, they've kept this quiet for a while. And there's been some research done. I think it's about eighteen months of research done on the picture. And um, the John Whitmer Historical Society uh, are, or have or are going to release a story about it. And um, Lachlan McKay. Um, he was one of the people behind bringing this out, doing the research behind it. And uh, I've seen uh, the video he's in with uh, Mormon Book Reviews. I think it's John Hamer is in with from the, the Community of Christ. And they talk about it. And um, I think it's an interesting video, the way they discussed the uh, painting. Or, sorry, they discussed the, the daguerreotypes. It's a daguerreotype, not a photo we have to be careful not to mix the two up really because so the daguerreotype's a copy of something so um, my initial my initial thoughts on seeing the picture were uh, well okay this is just another Joseph Smith picture you know they're always coming about there was one a couple of years ago of a young Joseph sitting on a chair in the waistcoat and he had a book in his hand Everyone's like, oh, this is a new picture of Joseph Smith. And that didn't get past the verific the, 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 the you know the verification stage and the authentic authentic authentication stage. They didn't get through any of that. So uh, that that sort of fell by the way. So we've had a lot of these over the years, these photos that have cropped up about of Joseph uh, that haven't gone through authentication very well. But this this is slightly different because it has gone through authentication and it has gone through experts who have looked at it and compared it to the 1842 portrait that was done. And um, there are some similarities between the portrait and the daguerreotype. So... Um, my initial thoughts were well, okay, well great. You know, if this is another if this is if this if this turns out to be the first authentic copy picture daguerreotype of Joseph Smith, then great. Fantastic. Uh what 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 has it gone through? What authentication has it gone through? What have they compared it next to? And you know, I've seen the video and seen what they've said. And I've done the comparisons of myself with the the, the painting in 1842 and the, the daguerreotype. And there are some similarities. I mean, glaring similarities. The, the hairlines, the hairline is exactly the same. 
Um, the, if you look at the, the the painting, one of his sides of his hair is longer than the other, and that's exactly the same on the the garotype. Um, there's a there's a really big indicator for me. It's this crease line on his forehead. Uh, near his eye, near, near his nose, it's a big crease mark, like a worry line almost. And that's in the painting, and it's in the picture. And no other picture has had that. Um, so that's another thing. The, the the small lines are exactly the same. Um, the lips, now the lips are different, but there are some similarities as well. Um, if you look very closely at the picture, there is like a white scar line on the picture. And his top lip seems to be a little uh, deformed, if you like. And that's been bought out in the painting for many years. People said he's got something wrong with his top lip. And you can see that in the photo if you look closely enough, or you want to look closely enough. And I think some of these things are just too too eerily similar to be coincidental. Um, Josie's reaction to the portrait at the time was, oh, that's just a picture of a silly little boy. It doesn't really represent the prophet of God. I think he looked at the picture and thought, well, it doesn't really look like me. There are some similarities, but it's not a real, a really great um, representation of me. And paintings are always like that. Um, paintings are always slightly off because the artist will naturally bring something of their own personality to their work and it will bleed through with their paintings. I mean, I'm a historian and I, I, I look at old photos a lot and if you compare, for instance, photos of Winston Churchill to actual painted pictures, you know, there are some dreadful painted pictures of Winston Churchill. Dreadful. Uh, Obviously, a photo is it's obviously it's a snapshot of a real likeness. And the same for Civil War photos in America. If you look at some paintings of um, Robert E. Lee, for example, they the artist always stylizes what Robert E. e. Lee looks like. And if you look at some of his photos, he um, he looks exhausted, worn, old, tired, because that's a photo, and photos don't lie. And I think the beauty of this photo, or this daguerreotype, if it turns out to be Joseph, shows for me, and I don't see it as a problem or an issue, shows for me how uh, how his last couple of years were very, very traumatic. I know a lot of people have complained about, oh, it can't be Joseph Smith because he died when he was 38 and this picture looks like an old, uh, from an old man. Well, I don't know what you're comparing it to. Because Joseph Smith died in 1844. This is before electricity, before hot and cold running water, before indoor heating. Uh, it's pretty rough uh, lifestyle. And he, he didn't have an easy life. Mobbed, moved around all the time, spent lots of time away from his family, was in prison for long stretches. Um, and many people at that time didn't live that old. Anyway, if you lived into your 60s, you were doing really well. So I don't have a problem with the picture, look, with him looking old in the picture. I just like the similarities that can be found in the photo, of the daguerreotype, and in the painting. Now the pe the picture and the painting, or the photo and the painting, they are they like two different people. But it's the little little bits, the little uh, similarities you have to take from both and say, yeah, well, yeah, probably, yeah, I can see those similarities. Why did the artist put those in? And like in the painting, he's made his eyes wider and lighter. Well, they tended to do that in those days because they wanted to paint people in the best light. They wanted to paint people in the best form. So they would sometimes exaggerate parts of a picture or a person. So I can see why the artist might have done that with Joseph's eyes being so deep set as they look like they were in this photo and close you know, quite heavily lidded. Um, so, 
and as it's a very recent picture and and the provenance of the photo that's the thing i like about it with lots of the photos they're either found you know at a, a sale somewhere or somebody goes to one of their aunties and they look through an old photo set and they come across his photo and people go, that looks like joseph smith this has come through family lines you know whether it's joseph smith the third his, his grandmother his, his mom it, they're all connected to the smith family um so for me the provenance is better for this photo than any of the others and um i probably think it might be him you know um and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that um I can, some way, so I can see why some people would be rubbed up the wrong way about it because, you know, all the paintings that have been done over the years of Joseph and all the, you know, statues and busts have been done. I mean, I've got a bust of Joseph. I've got a statue of Joseph. And they're very... And, of course, they're all from the LDS Church and they're all stylized in the way that they want him portrayed, like some heroic figure. And uh, I think we have to learn that... Um, Joseph was just a normal guy that just had extraordinary things happen to him. And he wasn't extra, he wasn't this, this like, I don't know what people want to see when they look at Joseph. Like, they want to see like a superhero character. And he wasn't that. He was a normal man with a normal life, with a normal family, with normal problems that just had extraordinary things happen to him and around him. And the other thing that I like about the photo is, and I, and I saw this on the um, the Mum and Book Reviews video with Blackland McKay and John Hamer. His name's John Hamer from the uh, the RL from the Community of Christ. Is a comparison to the Death Mask, and the comparisons to the Death Mask for me are really important. And what we have to understand or what you have to understand about the death mask is that isn't that isn't a very fair representation of joseph because they they when when, when they were molding the mask for the death mask i don't know whether it was leaking or or what it wouldn't have been very pretty mind they stuffed his nose and his nasal cavity with a uh, cotton cotton wool type substance they packed it out so if you look at on the death mask, his nostrils look really wide and, really, and his nose looks really bulbous. <laughs> but um, that would be an issue with the packing rather than not what his nose actually looked like. If you compare other features from the daguerreotypal photo to the death mask, there's loads there. The width of the eyes, the eyebrow, the, 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 the lip even. And don't we have to also take into account that Joseph... Uh, was shot multiple times, fell out of a window, and was probably beaten at the well side. So um, he didn't get away unscathed, did he? And the death mask is only going to show what he was like in the final moments of his life. But there are enough similarities between the daguerreotype photo and the death mask. And if they're the same likenesses that can be found in the, photo, in, in the painting, then you're onto a winner, and they are which is why they say it's 95% authenticated. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, I've no problem with that at all. Um, the deeper question for me is, is it is it necessary? Do we, do we really need to see a photo of... Uh, or a daguerreotype of Joseph Smith to believe in him? I think all those people that need to see things like that probably never have any testimony of Joseph to begin with, um, or don't or don't have a testimony of the restoration to begin with. Uh, I mean, we don't have a we don't have a photo of Jesus Christ, or we have of artist impressions. We build up in our mind what Christ looks like, and we actually meet him. It's like wow, it's a completely different person. Uh, so um, I don't think I've ever seen. And I have photos of Christ in my own home and of Joseph. I don't think I've ever seen a proper pucker uh, painted representation of Jesus. Um, they're all right. 
and they're close but they're not quite on the mark and I think that's the same with the Joseph Smith stuff so I think when people see this photo then it's not it's not the person they're expecting they they, they go oh, oh no it can't be him it can't be him look how old he is and, uh, he doesn't he only died when he was 30 yeah he wouldn't be that old we well, don't know that um you know and, and then of course you get all the ex the ex crowd you know who look at the photo and just immediately take the mickey out of it and and you know totally go on a bender deriding it all of a sudden and uh you know i think i saw some guy it might have been yeah he said oh it's a mugshot and i'm like based on what like based why are you saying this what are you basing your accusations about Josie Smith on, you know, why do you hate him so much? I don't understand that either. I mean, I know if when people leave the LDS church, they tend to leave in a really big way and abandon everything, and they they tend to go down this rabbit hole of, oh, well, he must have been a polygamist and had 23 wives and had sex with children and all that kind of stuff, and without any real proof of evidence, uh, you know. And I just think, you know, that they're, they're, they're those sorts of people are looking for any excuse just to pick just to have a laugh, you know. Uh, but for the for the for the real believers, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's a touchy subject. Um, I personally don't need a photo or a daguerreotype of Joseph Smith. I don't need to see a real likeness of Joseph Smith to make me believe in what he did or what he stood for. I have his writings. I have the Doctrine and Covenants, I have his personal journal entries, um, I have uh, testimonials of people who knew him, and I have uh, his mother's explanation as to who he was, and that's that's good enough for me. But, you know, I can understand why a photo would be appealing. You know, people want to put some up in their house, it's more accurate um, than an artist's impression. I can see how that would become attractive. Certainly, I'm not going to merchandise the heck out of this, I'd imagine. Um, if it sticks. Now I know that the uh, John Whitmer Historical Society are going to be doing, because I think they've got their meeting coming up soon, they're going to be doing a whole section on this, this photo. So that'll be interesting to view and watch when that comes out. And as I say, it's an interesting topic to take a photo of, and to get a photo no one's ever seen before and to compare it to the paintings and the death mask and you see the little little bits and pieces that make sense you know you see the worry lines that the artist paints and you go to the picture and they're there you see the hair the, the way it's lopsided and you go well he painted that and it's in the picture and then you look at his lip and you go well the lips deformed in the painting and, it, and it's slightly deformed in the picture so yeah you can you can look at that and he goes to the death mask and you still see them there and you go wow his lips even worse than death mask but his nose isn't right well, there's, there's, there's a reason why his nose isn't right, which I've said. Um, which is why I wouldn't use a death mask too too much. I mean, if you look at the higher of his death mask, he's got a, he's got a fault, he's got a chin on it, a false chin on it, and a great big gaping hole next to his next to his uh, nose, which which destroys the theories about Hiram Smith's death, and you have to re-examine that just from the death mask. So, um, from a religious point of view. Um, I think it's interesting. I think it's informative. Do I think it's necessary and important that people get, you know, worked up and wound up about it? Definitely not. Definitely not. I don't need... I mean, you could release a thousand daguerreotypes of so-called Joseph Smith and it would make a scrap of difference to how I feel about him as a person or what he did as a person, what he said and what he brought about. And what he brought about is something that is affecting my life today in the 21st century and affecting your life today in the 21st, whether it's negative or positive. Uh, whatever you can say, whatever you want to say about Joseph Smith, people are still talking about him in the 21st century. People are still debating his theories and his theologies. People are still interested enough in Joseph Smith so when something is found, like a supposed photo, people comment about it and they get worked up about it and they have videos about it and interviews about it which i think just shows the strength of the human being we're talking about here you know i mean how many other supposed prophets of that time do we talk about and there were lots of them joseph smith wasn't in a vacuum 
It was surrounded by people at the time calling themselves prophets. Uh, I think the reason we still do that is because of the depth of work, the depth of feeling toward, to the man himself. And I've, I think that speaks volumes to his character. And, uh, you know, if the picture is Joseph, then that's great. I'll accept that. I can accept it. I can look at that photo and still see the Book of Mormon. I can still see the first vision. I can still see all the great things he did without having to be critical about his age in the photo or the you know the provenance of the photo, which, by the way, the provenance is very good. Uh, so I just wanted to get online and do a video expressing how I felt about the, the current situation and... Um, expressing how I felt about the photo and I think I've done that today uh, if you want my my opinion I probably think it's 95% proof that it's Joseph Smith really if I had to nail my colours to the mast um, so but we'll wait and see what other research comes out of the photo we'll see what happens but as it stands at the moment, probably, yeah. And I'm okay with that. Um, so, um, that's that really. I don't think there's anything else I really want to add with regards to the photo, other than to say to you, again, that it really doesn't matter what Joseph Smith looked like, you know, uh, what his eyes look like, or his hair, or his chin, or his nose. It's what he said that matters. It's what he did that matters. Um, and, and we can debate. We can debate that all day long. We can debate interpretations about what Joseph did and said all day long because we have written texts, and that's fine. Um, but I think the photo just brings a new dynamic to the Joseph Smith story that's been missing for a while. Uh, whether churches and organisations within the restoration will run with this is another matter. Whether some will come out and try and distance themselves from it is probably happened there, here and there, I think. Um, but I'm not going to do that because if it turns out to be Joseph Smith, we're going to look a right idiot. Um, and uh, as I said, I've done my research on the photo and I've compared it to the, the the painting and the death mask and I can certainly see what the people are talking about with regards to the the uh, the similarities so that's my video for today uh, I hope it's been instructful helpful I hope that it's, um, it's um, just cleared up a few things about this Joseph Smith picture and uh, as I say I'm on my holidays at the moment I'll probably do another video or two before I leave um, definitely going to squeeze in a Q and A because of we've we've we really had a volume of questions coming into us recently. So I want to talk about those. I mean, a few interesting conversations with people that I want to talk about. So lots of good stuff happening, and uh, I'll more than likely get onto those before I get back home. So check out the new picture of Joseph Smith. Look at it, pray about it, do whatever you feel you want to do about it, your research, but it's just interesting stuff from a historical point of view. And it's also interesting that after all this time, we're still finding still finding artefacts linked to, uh, to Joseph Smith after all this time. So um, it's all good, really. So I'll see you again soon. Take care of one another, look after yourselves, and uh, be good. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.